Howdy folks, back at it again with our fifth Blender tutorial. This one's going to be out about the camera and rendering. So first thing we're going to do is make sure that we are in Cycle Render here at the top. We've done that before. And then we're going to select everything with A and delete it. And you can see the handy keyboard down here uh, that can help you uh, figure out what I'm doing. Uh, then we're going to do something that you might not be able to see on your screen. I might not be able to stream it properly, but I'm going to open um, our user preferences again and go to system. You can't see this. I can see what you can see. Uh, and then change your cycles compute device, which is down here, uh, to CUDA. So that's user preferences system and then change your cycles compute device to uh, CUDA and then save that. I can help you with that if you don't know how to do that. That just changes our, uh, tells our computer what uh, type of hardware to use to render our project, which is what we're going to be doing today. Okay, now that we're in Cycles Render and everything's gone, I'm just going to really quickly create a scene, which I've done a billion times now. So I probably don't have to talk you through it, but I'll probably just, you know, say things anyway, just because that's what I do. We're going to go to edit mode. We're going to subdivide, subdivide, subdivide. You can probably do it that many times. Triangulate that. And then we're going to grab pieces of it as we've done so many times. Oh, I forgot some. I forgot to proportionally edit it. So we're going to turn that on. And now grab and lock it and pull out. And do that a couple of times. That's looking okay. I'm just going to pull up a few things and do something a bit different today. And I'm going to grab um, things at random here just to make it look a bit. Pull these in and out. It's triangulated already, so that's going to give us kind of a cool look. Pull up here just like we've done before. And again, I'm going to come over here and make a kind of lake kind of idea. I'm going to pull just one thing down, pull it wide. And in the middle of that lake, I'm going to make a small, make a little island, which I'll come back to in a second. It's going to be kind of cool. Uh, and again, we're just going to pull up stuff so we can come back and make it pretty colors as we learned last time. Okay, that's not too bad. I uh, want kind of a tall mountain here somewhere, so let's take this one here, pull it up, and then come up again to this face here. There we go. That's kind of a cool mountain. Okay, so I'm going to then pull my random uh, tool here, turn back on proportional editing, uh, use my random fall off, and I'm just going to grab stuff and just a little bit, bit by bit, grab it. Um, yeah, sorry, I had the wrong node on there, I think. There we go. Kind of neat there. And we're going to then go uh, to our view modes. Five for orthographic, three for side, Z for wireframe. And we're going to go and create some materials here for it. New material. Forest. New material. Stone. New material. Snow. And then we're going to make another material for water. I have three here, and I'm going to color them various things. Do, do, do. Nice forest there. Stone, we're going to color sort of gray. Keep this really simple. Pull that way up. And then water, I'm going to turn, of course, to be blue. There we go. We've got some materials there. I'm going to go back to my side view. Zoom in here. 
and I'm going to use my face selection tool, my box selector here, and let's pull the snow first. Color that all snow, hit the assign button, deselect, pull those there for a stone, and then these here for forest. And then finally, this area here as water. Okay, we can come out of this mode, turn on our material mode, and see how that all shook out. Oh, it looks like I missed quite a few faces there. So I'm going to manually do that by keeping on face selection mode, and holding down the shift button, and just sort of clicking on all these faces that I missed. and assigning them to be the color we might want. Keep that stone. Zoom in here. For some reason, it's really having a hard time selecting that one face. There we go. Stone. And... I'm not going to spend too much longer on this because it's not really what we're doing today. It's reviewed from last day. So we can just pretend that we did everything. I taught you a couple tricks in the last one about subdividing more faces. And you can pretend I did all that as well. Okay. So come out of here. There we go. It's looking pretty cool. I'm going to go to my island here. And I want to turn the top of this island to stone as well, just to give it a different look. Okay, cool. Uh, then I'm going to do something neat that I haven't shown you before. I'm going to grab this vertex here, somewhere on this island, hopefully at the lowest possible point, which I think is that. I'm going to grab it with proportional editing on. Oh, I'm going to change my editing mode back to smooth. Then I'm going to grab it and pull up here just so it sort of balances in. And then I'm going to funkify it by randomly doing this so it creates kind of a ripple effect. If I grab it now and pull it out, that's too much. Too much. There we kind of go. It's not exactly what I meant, but it seems to be really stepping up really stuck in there the different modes but that's probably my graphics card I can hear it buzzing in the background as I said before it's not as good as yours okay so we're coming back to uh, user perspective mode and uh, we've got our mountain here it's pretty good now one thing you should know about blender is that it does um, 3D rendering as well. But we haven't really talked about that too much, so we're gonna talk about that now. Uh, we have our different modes here. We've got a material mode, but that's not really a three-dimensional um, object. It's just sort of a plan for a three-dimensional object. In order to make it three-dimensional, we have to render it. And you do that by going to rendered view mode here, but you can see that's pretty bad. That's not good at all. So we need to add some light. We don't have any light in there because I deleted it right from the beginning. You might still have a light in there because you might not have deleted everything, but I've deleted the light. So I'm going to add a light now. So I'm going to do that going back to object mode. Then I'm going to add my uh, 3D cursor where I'm going to add my light. I kind of want it coming from this side over here. And I'm going to shift A to create a new mesh. I'm going to make that a plane. I'm going to rotate the plane so it's roughly um, sort of side facing the mountain there. I'm going to rotate it so it's a bit flatter. There we go. And then I'm going to scale it way up. Okay. And then I'm going to go back to my materials tab over here, create a new material for it. But instead of making it a color, a diffuse surface, I'm going to make it an emission. And that just means that now this is a light source. So if I pull up the strength, it's going to get really bright. I can make it slightly yellow to give it sort of a sunset look. And now when I go to render mode here, 
hopefully this won't over here hopefully this won't take too long there so we flooded our light with or our scene with some light which again your computer is going to do a better job than mine at doing so if we go back to material here it's the same but if we go into render mode it looks cool it's got shadows and stuff like that which is super neat i can even now go back to my materials i can select my water material instead of being a color i can make that glossy this time and now when i go back to my rendered mode the water is going to have some gloss to it now it's maybe a bit much gloss but uh it's just kind of a cool thing you can do um so let me go back to material here let me rough up the water a bit there we go and uh but that's still not everything we can do okay so we're back in object mode here which is what we want to be in and we need to add a camera now we need to take a picture of this thing we need to make it look uh like we can print it out so let's put a camera in the scene itself is that a good place for a camera it's a pretty good place for a camera so again shift a and we're gonna go all the way down here to camera okay now we have a camera we can see camera mode by having our num lock on and pressing zero. That's what our camera is going to see. Now that's a terrible camera angle. Can't see anything good. So we're going to rotate that camera around. We'll pull it up here. Zero. Still not great. Let's try scaling it, making it bigger. Zero. That's better, but it's a bit too uh, a bit too close. So let's move it back. Okay, and this way you can see we have the green on the back of the mountain. That's not going to matter at all because it's not really in our camera view. That's better, not too bad. So let's um, pull that up again so I can even move it up just with these arrows here. Not bad. I don't need my camera doing the whole thing. I think I actually need to grab it and uh, move it this way. And then rotate it. So this takes a little tricky here. Let's lock it to an axis here. Let's swing it over here. That's better, but we don't want our light source in our camera. So again, we're gonna have to grab it, move it along one of these axes here. There we go. And then if we're really concerned here, I'm gonna get the top of the mountain in. That's gonna be slightly tricky to use this axis here a little bit more back and then a little bit rotated up that's too far let's just undo that rotate it one click up there that's pretty good but our light source is kind of in the way so let's grab our light source now and um, pull that back use that there and the corner into there there that's pretty good so now if we press F12 on our keyboard it'll render our actual camera shot with all the light that we've set up and uh, it'll show us exactly what that camera is seeing and that's looking pretty good um, can't see the green on the back of those mountains because we've cleverly placed our camera in our scene we can see our nice glossy water that we've added and again your computer is going to be much faster than mine is at this uh, rendering process. Now we have an edge of the screen so we could come in and we could place our camera much closer to the scene. Um, we might have to shorten our really tall mountain here so everything fits in the screen. We don't really like these edges here so we can come back and do some fancy things. Just 75% done here. I'm just going to exit it there. Uh, come back and um, we can come in and do a couple things. So, oops, I zoomed way out there, sorry. Okay, so I'm gonna do one thing here. I'm going to, in this the back of my scene, way over here, hopefully that's far enough back. I'm in object mode, good. I'm gonna add another plane. I'm gonna rotate it pretty much vertical. Grab it, put it back here. I'm gonna scale it huge. That's still not going to be far enough back. Let's see. Oh, pull it down. That's just going to want it in my scene itself. So let's. Oh, that's why it's a little bit not rotated the right way. There we go. It's better. Okay, my camera look terrible. 
Okay, move it down. So there's a little bit of trial and error here. Let's just scale it bigger. There, covers my whole scene. Great. Let's make this into, give it a material here. We'll give it a uh, material. We'll color it like a nice little blue. So now when we render our scene, uh, you can see the light source is sort of half sticking out of it, but it gives a sort of blue sky look. So that's helpful. Now let's start another plane down here below our mesh. Uh, object mode, good. Another plane. Scale it way up. Let's grab it vertically. There we go. So it sits there. And we can, okay, so now this is a helpful time to talk about this, this menu up here. This is a hierarchy menu. This is handy. Plane one is our mountain. Plane two could be our, oh, it's our sky. So we're probably playing with plane three over here. So you see we can quick select things as, as things get complicated in our scene. This is a much better way to find out what we're going to do. You can even come in here and rename this. So this is actually going to be ground. And then it'll alphabetize, which is handy. I'm going to give it a new material. We're going to go for a kind of green color, just like our forest, so it'll blend in pretty much. There we go. That's handy. Come back to our scene, take a look. And now if we press F12, it's going to render our scene with a sky in the background. If my video card doesn't crash trying to do it. Um, and then you can get really fancy with this and you can add stars in the sky and you can add more material types and as we're going to do uh, later we're going to add objects like houses like trees like clouds and everything like that into this low poly scene so that uh, it can be completed in class okay thanks guys